Here's your weekly Sansar Baguio news bits. A look at this week's headlines. 80 million worth marijuana destroyed in Kalinga. Before market nod, still not a done deal. Dep Ed faces budget woes. Dog microchipping plans opposed. Illegal drugs operations strengthened in Benguet. And in sports, Jenilyn joins brother in Team Lakai. And for the details. More than 80 million pesos worth of marijuana plants were destroyed by anti-narcotics agents in Kalinga province. This report from Jonathan Yanis. Joint operatives led by the Kalinga Provincial Police Office of Police Regional Office Cordillera, Philippine Army, Philippine Navy, National Bureau of Investigation, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Cordillera and Region 2, and the Tinglayan Municipal Police Station conducted the operation in two locations from August 16 to 18. Authorities warned Mount Chumanchil in Barangay Lokong in Tinglayan and uprooted 404,300 fully grown marijuana plants worth 80.86 million pesos in nine separate sites located in a 21,000 square meter land area. Prior to this, an earlier operation was conducted on August 14 in another site in Barangay Lokong, leading to the discovery of 30,000 fully grown marijuana plants worth 6 million pesos planted in a 5,000 square meter land area. Despite the continued marijuana eradication, no cultivators were apprehended while the marijuana plants were uprooted and burned on site. Police Colonel Davy Limong, Kalinga PPO Provincial Director, said, these operations are part of their continuing intelligence gathering operations and community relations that gives way to the discovery and destruction of these fully grown marijuana plants in the area. Jonathan Lianes, Sunstar Baguio. Two entities are set to counter the approved public-private partnership for the people or P4 selection of the Baguio City Government, recommending the proposal of Robinson's Land Corporation or RLC for the development of the city public market. City Administrator Bonifacio de la Peña said the recommendation of the P4 for the pre-qualification of the proposal of Robinson's does not mean that the project has already been awarded to said corporation, as the terms may still be negotiated before reaching a final deal proponent do not translate to award of the contract. After the pre-qualification, the original proponent status of RLC will be opened to allow other companies to challenge the offer. But the P4 nod is not yet final. On the strength of its more comprehensive offer, SM Prime Holdings, which also submitted its market development proposal to the P4 and the group of market vendors, plans to challenge RLC's offer. Meanwhile, Vice Mayor Faustino Oloan said he is not surprised with the vote favoring RLC over SM Prime Holdings Incorporated to develop the city public market, adding with Robinsons, the city has a better control over the new facility, which is one of the landmarks that define the old Baguio. The Department of Education in Baguio revealed more than 200 million pesos will be needed for printing of learning materials for close to 60,000 students in the city. This report from Maria Elena Catahan. School Superintendent Carol Verano faced the City Council saying a recent survey shows 100% of respondents choose to have printed modules to learn in the new normal despite having internet connections, making the need to reproduce material for over 60,000 enrolled in public schools on top of priorities. Deped Baguio has also so far received only 43 million funding from the central office to cover the need for reproduction of modules, which costs 250 million. Verano said the amount is just 18% of what the department needs to carry out reproduction needs for those who chose to enroll. DepEd is asking the city council for a possible realignment of 39 million from the city budget for education for the needs of learners. Councillor Betty Lourdes Tabanda, meanwhile, asked DepEd to submit a proposal for the amendment of the DepEd appropriation in the city budget and likewise in the special educational fund. Maria Elena Catahan, Sunstar Baguio. 
Baguio City veterinarian Dr. Bridget Pio confirmed that mandatory dog registration starts in November. She said the registration of dogs will be done per barangay and dog owners will need to pay 300 pesos to register pets, in which microchipping will be included in the cost. This report from Joven Peralta. The registration for microchipping will be done per area, where owners will need to bring their pets, fill up information sheets for data entries on the dog and the dog owner, and proceed with the microchipping procedures. That's according to the city veterinarian, Dr. Bridget Piok. Meanwhile, an online petition to amend the city law requiring the registration is being challenged by netizens who argue about health hazards for pets born by the microchipping requirements. Netizens also fear small breeds and young pups may have adverse reactions to microchipping. The petition also cited the law as a violation of the owner's right to decide on what is best for their pets. But Piok said, the microchipping of small canine breeds, puppies, and dogs 3 kilos and below will not be done. She also explained the benefits of microchipping as a whole and added the microchips will eliminate the problem of double registration of pets and non-registration. Joven Peralta, Sunstar Baguio with the proliferation of illegal drugs in the northern parts of Benguet, anti-narcotics operatives and police continue to conduct by-bus operations and marijuana eradication. This report from Loren Alimondo. Police Colonel El Maragay, Benguet Provincial Police Office Director, said over the past months, police have been conducting operations against illegal drugs, including shabu often obtained from lowland provinces and distributed to the Cordillera region. Adding they are coordinating with law enforcers outside Binget to address the problem. Ragai pointed out that the fight against drugs is not a concern of law enforcers alone, but it needs the support and cooperation from barangay up to the provincial level. At least six barangays in Binget are still drug affected. Three in Latrindad, one in Bugyas, and two in Kibungan. Data shows from January to the second week of August this year, there were 52 by-bus operations conducted with 60 persons arrested and 405.92 grams of shabu confiscated, equivalent to 2.76 million. There were 38 marijuana eradication operations from the same period with an estimated value of 63.87 million. Aside from marijuana eradication operations conducted in Kibungan, there are also discovered plantation sites in Atok, Bakun, Kabangan, and Sablan. Lord Lamondo, San Star Baguio. And in sports, Igorota mixed martial artist and Muay Thai national athlete Jeneline Olsim formally joined Team Makai, hoping to pursue further her dream of becoming a world champion. This report from Jean Nicole Cortez. Olsim said leaving travel to Rogi was one of the hardest decisions she has ever made. But the SEA Games Muay Thai silver medalist said her transfer is all about passion and chasing what you really want. Her brother Jerry and one championship's rising star, Lito Adiwang, were also from tribal Turogi who made a jump to Team Lakai, considered as the country's top mixed martial arts gym. Aside from Lito and Jerry's achievements, Janeline said she was inspired by how they developed as an athlete and as an individual. Alsim, who has been training with Team Lakai for almost two months, revealed she informed tribal Turogi coach Christian Villarreal of her decision to move via text. Villarreal said he was shocked and surprised with Alsim's move and added he would have preferred talking to Janeline before her exit with the team. Alsim meanwhile said she will forever keep in her heart the lessons she have learned with tribal Turogi to respect all, fear none, and every action has a reaction. With Alsim joining the already potent Team Lakai, the squad now boasts of four lady fighters including Gina Inyong, Zefania Ngaya, and Islay Erika Bumogao. Coach Mark Sangyao meanwhile welcomed Jeneline and clarified he has talked to Alsim before she was accepted to the team. Ginico Cortez, Sunstar Baguio. For more updates, visit us at our website and our official social media accounts. 
Till next weekend, this is Conway Copas, reminding you to grab a copy of Sunstar Baguio, the only daily newspaper in Northern Luzon.